Picture this. You're in the market for a new flagship smartphone that costs under 60,000 rupees. You want a good set of cameras, you want excellent performance, and a design that turns heads. Well, if that's your dream scenario, then I'm here to tell you to wake up. Because I'm Soham, you're watching the EJ Tech Show. And this is my review of the brand new iQ9T. It gets everything that I just mentioned along with some brilliant extra features. So stay tuned to this video to see why this is one of the best phones in the segment. As always, if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the Editorji channel while you're at it. Let's start with the performance, which is one of the biggest highlights of the iQOO 9T, mostly thanks to that new Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset under the hood. It's the latest and greatest from Qualcomm, and it seems to address all the problems that we saw on the previous generation. I also had 12GB LPDDR5 RAM on this variant, but you can also get it with 8GB RAM. In my short testing period with the iQ90, I experienced no heating or throttling issues. Whether I was taking loads of videos, playing graphic-intensive titles like COD Mobile or Apex Legends, or just doing day-to-day -day multitasking. It's not all the chipset though, because the 90 also gets a large vapor chamber liquid cooling system to help with heat management on the device. I ran the phone through some synthetic benchmarks, and this is how the iQ90 performed. In a single run of Geekbench, the 9T scored a single-core score of 1318 and a multi-core score of 4114. In the Geekbench Compute Test, it scored 6449. In 3D Mark's Wildlife Test, the 9T maxed out, delivering stellar performance. Even in the longer Wildlife Stress Test, it scored 91.9% .9 stability, which is very good for a chipset at this level. Now, these were just preliminary results from popular benchmarking apps, but if you'd like to see us do an in-depth gaming performance review, let us know in the comments down below. In terms of aesthetics, iQ has always set itself apart, and with the 90, it's more of the same. I received the Legend variant, which is made in partnership with BMW, so it gets this red, black and blue stripe down the white back. The camera section is housed in the giant black rectangle that gets a sort of carbon fiber pattern and the branding for the V1 Plus chip. The side rails are metal and finished in matte, and while this isn't exactly a unibody design, iQ has done a great job of making it look very premium. There's also some nice attention to detail like the blue power button that sits in a recess along with the volume rocker. Despite being quite large, the 9T does not feel extremely heavy in the hand, but it does have a nice weight to it. There's a USB Type-C port at the bottom along with the SIM card tray and the stereo speakers which get adequately loud, but seemed to be tuned to offer more output from the bottom speaker rather than the earpiece. You also get an infrared blaster at the top of the phone to control compatible household appliances, which is a nice feature to see at this price point. The 9T is also IP52 rated, which isn't the best in terms of protection from water, but it's still good to see IP certification in this segment. Now, the iQ90 gets a fantastic display. It's a 6.78 inch E5 AMOLED panel with a full HD plus resolution and 120Hz refresh rate. Color reproduction is fairly accurate while still offering a vibrant experience while watching content. Speaking of content, not only is the display HDR10 plus compatible, but it also gets HDR10 HEVC certification for Netflix, which is a big plus. Thanks to this, you get great contrast levels on HDR content, offering an enhanced viewing experience. Another big plus is the almost uniform bezels. They'd be perfect if it wasn't for a slightly bigger chin at the bottom. That being said, this display is a joy to use, and even though it doesn't get LTPO technology to ramp down the 120Hz refresh rate, iQOO says the E5 AMOLED panel will consume 25% less battery than an E4 AMOLED panel. The iQOO 9T also houses a fingerprint scanner inside the display that's placed lower down and was both quick and consistent in unlocking the phone. Let's now move on to the cameras because the iQ90 has a rather interesting camera setup that you don't often get to see at this price point. It gets a 50 megapixel Samsung GN5 primary sensor with optical image stabilization, along with a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera and a 12 megapixel sensor dedicated to portrait images. Pictures taken with that primary sensor in well lit outdoor situations are fairly decent with a good amount of vibrancy and sharpness. HDR is strong but well controlled and it never looks overdone. The 13 megapixel ultra wide also offers pretty great pictures with not a lot of distortion, but there is quite a bit of difference in color reproduction compared to the main sensor. 
Get close enough to your subject and the 90 will automatically turn on the super macro mode using that ultra-wide sensor. And honestly, it produced some pretty detailed close-up shots. The 12 megapixel sensor offers good results when it comes to portrait images and can even be used to extend the camera's reach digitally to 20x. Edge detection is pretty good, skin tones and color accuracy also come out well, and overall, I like this camera setup. However, being an IQ device, there are some quirks. For instance, some portrait images taken in mixed lighting conditions create this weird whitish effect on the subject's face. Then there's the issue of no OIS on the 2x sensor. Now, normally this wouldn't be an issue, most manufacturers just substitute it with EIS, but IQ has done something completely different. Let's say you're using the 2x sensor and the camera detects a subject. If at this point you shake your hands a bit too much, the IQ90 will immediately switch over to the main sensor and crop in. It isn't a big issue to me, but it does feel a bit odd that you're never really quite sure whether the image you've taken has been taken on that dedicated 2x sensor or using the main sensor cropped in. Anyway, let's move on to night photography where the IQ90 performs fairly well. Low light images taken with the dedicated night mode retain a good amount of color, pictures come out looking sharp, and there's barely any grain or noise. In terms of video, the 90's V1 Plus chip comes handy because there's excellent color reproduction, details are clear, and since there's support for 4K 60fps, videos come out looking quite smooth. However, the auto exposure works quite aggressively and can end up blowing out highlights in well-lit situations. Now, battery life on this phone did not disappoint me at all because its 4700mAh unit was enough to get me through a full day's usage, even with the 120Hz refresh rate turned on. If you want, you can ramp out that 120Hz refresh rate to 60Hz to get some more battery life, but honestly, you won't need to because the 90 gets a great party trick. It gets a 120W fast charging adapter in the box that takes the phone from flat to full in around 20 minutes, which is close to being as good as it gets. Also worth mentioning is the charging cable, which is quite a bit longer than most bundled charging cables I've seen, but it does tend to plug out of the adapter quite easily if it gets caught in anything. Anyway, let's now move on to the software experience on the iQOO 90, which does seem to be getting better year on year. FunTouch OS with Android 12 is quite slick to use on this phone, but it does get a fair bit of bloatware, including some which can't be deleted or disabled. Still, you get iQOO's Ultra Game Mode here that enhances the mobile gaming experience and lets you monitor various parameters at any given point of time. Good cameras, excellent performance, and a design that turns heads. The iQ90 delivers on all these fronts, and its extra features make it even more compelling. At a starting price of 49,999 rupees, this just might be the best phone in the segment. And if you're looking for outright power, nothing else comes close.